So hello everyone, today we are sketching this. We're going to call it a geometric dog. We've got a lovely reference photo that I took a little while ago. A dog in a sand dune where me and Tash had the, the pleasure of spending a night. Um, it's uh, a fun way of, I think, of sketching anything living. Um, humans, dogs, birds, in this kind of geometric feel. And I would love to know your thoughts. So let me know in the comments um, your thoughts about this sketch, the process things you like, things you do differently. It's amazing to learn from each other like that. But without further ado. So we are going to be drawing this little dog today. The uh, photos up here, and this is a, a photo I took um, in India years ago, where myself and Tash had the fortune of spending a bit of time not in this country. Um, before, uh, you know, travel was difficult and all that kind of thing. Anyway, this chap came along as we were sleeping in the desert and um, for some reason I still have this photo. But then I thought, it's quite a fun portrait. So let's have a go at it and see what we can make of it, doing a really quick and loose, fun sketch. Now, we are gonna start straight in with pen. And actually, I've got my paper set up landscape, haven't I? But this is a portrait and the, our little doggy's portrait as well. So let's sketch him in portrait. Gonna start with a, a fine nibbed Lamy Safari fountain pen and I'm just gonna go for it. Now, with dogs, I like to start with the nose. I don't know why, but I think, well, maybe I do know why, because the nose is kind of their feature. The nose, the snout, the exact shape of it is what separates them from being a fox, being a cat, or, or whatever else. Um, and I like doing this in a kind of geometric and um, sort of scratchy, loose, continuous line style. And what we need to do is just have a little careful think about our angles as we go around. And we're looking at, compared to the nose, where does the snout end? Where does it angle up? And we go loose because it means we can change things. So I got things a bit wrong there. The angles are always a bit sort of awkward to work out, but because it's loose, I can sort of redo my line and this one will fade into the ether. And what we're trying to do is capture those shapes and capture it's basically a cylinder going backwards, isn't it, in the nose, or, or a cone going backwards. So we can just really capture it as such and build in those kind of structural feeling lines which tell us the perspective of what we're looking at, even from the start. The same the eyes, we're now kind of building in these, this flatter shape, but with a hollow out. And then the eye, where is it? It's sort of this angle and this angle, so nice round eyes as well, this dog, which makes life a bit easier. And they're quite, almost oddly far apart. I think maybe I've drawn them a bit too far. I'm not too worried about exactly where they go, but just aiming for it to be about right. And then we can more easily come around the head and we're just picking out shapes now. And you see again, I've gone too wide, haven't I? Because um, actually the, the, the head angle's in, but my loose, Wobbly lines mean that I can re-angle that and we can come down. And what's this going to be? Oh, it's going to be ear texture or something like that, isn't it? Here we've got this line and then it kind of pokes out and goes around. And you can see I've pretty much got the shape of the head and we've built it up in a very structural way where we're, we're explaining to the observer how we've put it together. And that's fine. It's not a photo. It, it is a sketch and it's it's supposed to tell us something about the artist, not just about the, the scene. Tells us how we like our art and hopefully, if you're watching this, you liked the thumbnail enough to like it as well. Anyway, so moving back, we got to just define the top of our head and then the next bit, which is gonna make a dog a dog, is these lovely floppy ears, isn't it? And they come in two distinct planes. You've got the flopped over triangle and we've got the unflopped over sort of rectangle. Now the same on this other side. Got a sort of unflopped over triangle this time, and maybe this is a flopped over rectangle, give or take. And you see how now things are really starting to take shape. And all we've done is build up sort of structural areas, nothing clever, nothing particularly difficult. And then he sort of pokes off to the side there, doesn't he? He's got a very long neck before we get into this arm here. And we can have a look and have we got anything particularly wrong? Well, I don't know, he's probably not tilted forward enough, is he? 
Um, I maybe I've foreshortened his head a bit too much, but basically I'm happy with this sketch. It's easy to just lengthen the, the mouth a little bit. We can square off the jaw a little bit as well. But you see how, because it's all loose, we can just come in and we can edit a few bits. I've turned my pen over now as well, so now I'm doing these sort of more defining lines. I can make them a bit bolder. And I can pick up some of the planes elsewhere as well. And the neck is filled with interesting planes of movement. See how he twists around here and we can get that in with some nice strong lines. And then just get the edge of the bed in so he's sort of framed. And we just enlarge that ear a little bit as well just to provide a bit more symmetry with this ear. And then let's just take a little bit of care over the sort of bits which make, well, give the dog some personality, make it who he is. At the moment those eyes look a bit, dare I say, demonic. Um, but I think we can soften them up, give him some lovely little eyebrows. And dogs do have eyebrows and they do have funny little, well, almost like um, their whiskers are really long eyelashes. Not eyelashes, really long eyebrow hairs. Then, talking of whiskers, getting all these lovely dots and this kind of texture on top, always bearing in mind, of course, the, uh, the perspective that we're working with. Okay, I'm almost done. We can't see any detail in the nose, so I'm just gonna hatch that out, make it really dark, make it what it is. And then I'm going to bring down our pupils into these eyes. And that's where I think the eyes will become a bit less demonic. Perhaps still quite kooky, but hopefully we can fade that away with some other lines and a bit of colour. And talking of other lines, I'm going to initially come in with some really bold pen. And this is where we're going to make those corrections to shape a little bit because we can really go yeah this is this is the real line this is the one I intended all the others are just for show for a bit of texture and fun we can black in these really dark areas before we get to our colors and we can See that lovely little slope to his head that I missed the first time? Well, we can just add that in now that we've got this really bold pen to create new lines. And there we go. I think he's starting to really get a little bit of sort of cheeky character. And there we go. So that last line here and this last sort of framing line across. And I haven't drawn in the legs, so we'll just do that now. And that is the beginning of our sketch. That is our, well, not the beginning, it's our pretty much our full sketch. Now because of that dark thick ink, I'm just going to dry it quickly with my hairdryer before we move on to the colours. And that's all it needs, just a couple of seconds. And we're gonna have some fun now with, with what colors we're using and how we apply them. We've got these lovely geometric shapes and we can use those. And we can use those to create sort of the shadows and choose where we put the colors and make some artistic choices. So if we just look around and we, it's almost gonna be, dare I say it, painting by numbers. Cause what we're gonna do is fill in these sort of gaps we've made and we're gonna, not 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 go over lines, but we're going to not completely soften our wash over all these lines, and that lets us create this fascinating sort of build up of of uh, a different kind of build up of shape compared to what we might normally do with very gentle, softly, softly watercolors. And it also means we're going to leave some big white areas. That first lot of colour was all um, all lunar earth. Just a nice warm uh, 
brown which has a lovely granulating quality. Into these shadows I've got a mix of Van Dyke brown and, and perylene violet and then these ears I'm going to mix a bit of quinacridone with my lunar earth again just to create a different tone so look at that lovely standout area of colour now. We're not too worried about it being the world's neatest paint by numbers. <laughs> Gosh, I can't believe I'm saying it. Finally admitting what I do. Um, but just the idea of this colour staying within its bounds. And just trying not to get the same colours perhaps next to each other as well. So we can vary them down here. We can leave some inappropriate um, white. So it shouldn't be white here because it's in shadow. But let's just experiment and leave that. And as we move up, we can use more of this perylene violet to create these shadows. We're getting into a sort of, it's more shadowed. It's difficult to see because at the same time as being more shadowed, my eye wants to say it's actually lighter. But I think that's just because the white fur is there. So I'm gonna to move to a moon glow, which will give us a nice, just relatively neutral shadow. And I'm actually gonna curve that around just to help separate that whole boundary out. So you're just having that curving round colour I think separates out head from neck quite nicely. Now an element of separating colours and things out is also getting the background separate. So I'm going to take quite a lot of Hansa yellow because it's a colour we've not used before. And I'm going to use that to outline our chappy. And this is sort of simulating the fact that he's in a in a bit of a desert. Or at least on a it was a sand dune. So not not a total desert, but certainly an element of sand. And then when we've got this colour in the foreground, or the well in the background I suppose, isn't it? It just feels very foregroundy because of how intense this lovely yellow is. But when we've got this done we can start looking around and deciding. How does that mean we want to change our other colours? And they probably want to amp up, don't they? They probably want to be more intense to compete with that very bold decision. So let's do that. Let's amp up some of our colours. And we can do that still using our sort of geometric idea. So now I'm painting within these, these squares we've got before and I'm creating variations within them. So I've got a lunar earth here and I can create shadows within our sort of square of colour by just dropping it in at the top or even by coming in with let's try a little bit of let's say moon glow and we can bring that in and around the eye and create that sort of eyeliner shadow type look that he's got and the, the pupils are not white so what well, the pupils the um, irises aren't white so let's make them not white we can get some shadows in here and we can even just really amp up the shadows underneath as well. And then as we do that we'll come round and we're going to make a point of contrast here so we'll have the nice and dark shadows but then under the chin where we've got really dark shadows on the face we'll make the shadows less dark. And that's all just again using our funny geometric dog and moving things around and making a few interesting decisions about how we bring colour to him. I think with that we're pretty much done. I'm just going to let it dry and then add a couple of touches of white to, uh, to things like the, the eyes and maybe the nose to bring out a couple of highlights. Okay, so there is our dog, not completely dry by any means, but mostly dry. Um, the, the hair dryer gives a lot of movement to that paint. It also flattens it a bit, so it's not the best thing if you're after a, a really crisp finished image, but it's fun if you're playing with granulated colours and you don't mind these sort of funny patterns appearing all over your work. Um, what I'm going to do now, like I said, a bit of, bit of a white Posca pen and acrylic marker, and this is where we can kind of neaten up a few areas we can make sense of these eyes just by getting a little reflection suddenly the eyes are more believable. We can add funny reflections and highlights in 
around the ears as well and some of that acrylic can can go into these patches of wet to create different textures. Under the chin we've definitely got these little white hairs which I lost a bit with that last wash and I just wanted to to bring them back really. And then we've got lots of hairs coming out, lots of whiskers. Now the whiskers are black but we can make a decision that we can have a kind of mix. So if we do some white whiskers because then they'll contrast nicely against our shadows and if we then take a really fine pen, so I've got my finest fountain pen extra fine, I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to try and sort of ghost underneath those lines, Ooh, if it will let me, Just bear with me. So if I ghost underneath, I'm going to have to do it on the right way up, it's not liking the wet paper I think. So what I'm doing is trying to sort of mirror those white whiskers so that the whiskers are contrasting at different points against different colours. Okay. And if you want, you can go and recapture some of these shapes as well. Something I love doing in all of my sort of sketches and things. And then you might, in doing so, notice that you can clear up the reflections in the eyes, like I have there, for example. You might find that you can just pull out a bit more structure double down on this geometric feel we've got going. And you might think at some point that you've had enough and you think you're done. I can do one last touch because I really want this reflection because I think if I had one criticism of this sketch it's that it took me a long time to get the eyes um, not feeling a bit odd. And I think for me at least, the eyes have got there now. Certainly good enough for a fun little sketch. So there we go, there is my, let's call it geometric dog uh, from India, nonetheless. Um, using interesting mix of colours, some geometric feel to, to decide how we apply those colours. And basically just having a lot of fun um, and experimenting with how we apply paint and how we portray a living, breathing uh, creature. I hope you've enjoyed that. Please do let me know in the comments. Um, and if you do enjoy my work, like, subscribe. It's a huge support to my little channel. And you can check out my work and other tutorials like Skillshare tutorials via my website as well, urbansketch.co.uk.